Welcome to another video. This is a very fun problem that is easy for everybody who knows what to do. <laughs> like I always say, knowing what to do is the key. So this is from the Harvard MIT math tournament of 2024. So that's this year, February. And this question, the first time I saw it, um, I thought I figured out the answer immediately because it looked very easy. But the question actually said, what is the maximum possible value of A sub 1? You must show proof that you got the answer. And that's where I started having questions about what I did. So here, if we have A sub 1 up to A sub 100, all of them being integers, and we were not told if they were positive or negative integers. So that's where I knew I had a problem with what I assumed. Okay, because what I thought to myself is if I want to find the maximum value of a sub 1, I can assume everything here apart from a sub 1 is 0. And when I do that, what makes me think that that would be the maximum? What if these numbers were all negative? Because if they're negative, then I, I don't know what to do about them because it wouldn't make sense. I might think I'm getting the maximum, but I'm just getting another number that I'm assuming. Okay, so... You can always know whether your numbers are positive or negative if you make them squares. And that's why the squares were on top. So here you had squares, which makes all of these positive, but the bottom, you cannot guarantee that you are making the bottom bigger or smaller if you make all these other numbers equal to zero. And that was the problem that I had. Okay, I have a solution. Let's get into the video. I'm going to do it like um, a ninth or tenth grader. I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator. So what I'm going to have would be, um, I'm going to say that a sub 1 squared plus times a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus blah, 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 plus a sub 100. Okay, so now if I distribute this, this is going to be the same thing. I wish I could. Let me do it here, actually. So I'm going to have a sub 1 plus 100, a sub 2 plus all the way to 100, a sub 100. Now, I'm going to collect all the terms to one side. It's going to give me a sub 1, 100, no, come on, a sub 1 squared minus this guy, minus 100 a sub 1. So what I'm going to do is every single term I'll be adding together will be positive. And you do that by completing the squares, which I'm going to do in the next one. So what you have is going to be, then I'm going to go to the next term plus a sub 2 squared. Bring this over, it's going to be minus 100 a sub 2. Um, then plus, we're going to keep going until we get to this term, a sub 100 squared minus 100, a sub 100. And what we have left on this side is going to be zero because we've moved everything over to this side. Now, if I perform completing the squares on this, now why am I doing it? It is to guarantee that everything I'm adding together is positive. Okay, that's the, that's the good thing about completing the squares. So if I do completing the squares here, remember, it is half of the middle term or half of the linear term here, the, co the coefficient of a, then you square it and you add it to both sides. So see what's going to happen here. This is going to be a1 squared minus, let's make it, let's just write this out and then I'm going to skip the rest. And then this is going to be minus 100 a sub 1 plus, I'm going to add half of this, which is going to be, what is half of 100? 50. What's the square of 50? I'm just going to write 50 squared. Okay, let me write it as because I don't need to actually evaluate 50 squared minus 50 squared. So I haven't changed anything here. What is here is what is still here. I just did this, but what I'm going to do now is, 
if I move this minus 50 squared to the other side, it will become 50 squared. But I'm going to have this here. So this minus 50 squared, I've moved it over to the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing to this guy, and it's going to be another minus 50 squared coming from here. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to move how many of them? 100 of them. Remember, this gap contains 97 that we didn't talk about, right? One, two, you have 97, add it to this, and then the hundredth one. So there's going to be 100 of this times 100 of the 50 squares, because all of these will be perfect squares. So let me rewrite this nicely as a perfect square. Okay, let me, let me, let me get rid of this. So this becomes plus, I'm going to do the same thing. This is going to be a2 squared minus 100 a2 plus 50 squared plus goes all the way to this one, a100 squared minus 100. Ah, that's messy. plus, tap, 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 plus A100 squared minus 100 A100 plus 50 squared equals 50 squared times. Okay, I had to rewrite it because things were getting really tight. But now that you've seen that we've made this is a perfect square because we can rewrite this as just a1 minus 50 squared. And we can rewrite this as a2 minus 50 squared plus. So if we go all the way to the end, we got a100 minus 50 all squared. And that gives us 100 times 50 squared. So at this point, in order to obtain the maximum value of A, we have to minimize everything else contributing to this addition. Remember, we know that every single term is positive. So if you add a bunch of positive terms and then you zero them out, then the very first one has to be super big to equal the other side. So in order to obtain the maximum value here, we have to minimize this, okay? And minimizing this, this can never be anything other than zero. That's the minimum it can be. Remember, this can never be negative. So if you want to minimize it, it can only minimize to zero. And that is what maximizes this when it comes to a sum. So to obtain, to obtain maximum a1 minus 50 squared other terms will be minimized that is equal to zero. So if we minimize all of the other terms, this is the only term remaining. a sub 1 minus 50 squared will be equal to this number. See, this number is 10 squared times 50 squared, right? We can actually write this as 10 squared times 50 squared, which is the same thing as 500 squared. 500 squared. And what does this mean? It means a1 minus 50 is 500. a1 minus 50 equals 500. And that means that a1 maximum, let's write it that way, maximum. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's put max here. So maximum a1 will have to be 550. I like this problem because anybody who thinks about it, who knows how to do completing the squares, will be able to answer this. That's all you need. And the reasoning that if something that is in a sum is maximized, the other things have to be minimized for you to maintain that sum. 
never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.